Hey guys, welcome back to the workshop. This week's project is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be building a project from a set of plans uh, from a man named Rick Alexander. He put these plans on his channel to build a pneumatic hand engraver. Um, I've actually never held one in my hand or seen one in person, so it's going to be a little bit of a different build for us. Um, ever since I was a kid, I've always seen uh, bird hunting shotguns or western revolvers with really detailed, beautiful hand engraving, and I've always wanted to learn um, how to do that or at least give it a try. Um, so this will be our first step uh, of me possibly trying it out. So stick around, and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so the graver is made from several parts. You've got the handle, you've got the uh, jam nut, you've got the barrel, and then a piston, and then there's a spring. Here's the graver holder, it turns into a quick change. So we're gonna start making some of these parts. I think we're gonna go ahead and start with the barrel. So let's go for it. So you can see here that the first drill and ream goes all the way through. The second drill is going to be halfway through right to where we're going to eventually drill some portholes. So what I'm doing right here is actually leaving a 100 thou by 100 thou tall brass peg that locks into the quick change graver holder. So right here, if you look close, you can see the two different diameters we drilled earlier. So the drawings call for the handle to be made from aluminum. I prefer to make one out of wood. So I'm gonna make a threaded insert uh, with this brass tubing. So we're gonna go ahead and ream this out to size, thread it half, uh, half inch 20, and let's get started. Alright, so now comes the part I've been dreading. Uh, we got to drill this handle out at a 45. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in through here. I've got this set at a 45. This is the uh, 5C collar block holding the jig. We're going to come down in the mill and drill it for that uh, piece of tubing. I decided to make a piece of tubing. That way the tube for the engraver can be pressed into it. I didn't think the wood would hold up over time and I think that this is a better looking solution. I 
decided to use a CA finish like I use on my pens. Basically, the way that I do this, I get the wood nice and sanded up to around 220. The first two coats of thin CA, I let soak in. Every coat after that, I add activator spray to make it go off. Then I'll sand it with 400 grit, do a couple more coats, then re-sand with 400 and 600 and polish, and it comes out great. I'll put a link in the video description for all the products that I use. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the jam nut. The jam nut basically is threaded on the inside, has a little bit of a relief, it's tapered on the outside, and then we're gonna add some flutes so it's easier to turn with our thumb. Let's go do it. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the piston. The piston's made from steel. It's got a little bit of a relief in the back that allows it to capture the spring. On the front, it has a narrower diameter with a little plateau, and that's the area that makes contact with the back of the graver holder. So this is actually what gives you the hammering action. So we're gonna make this out of steel right now. Here you can see that I'm making the spring out of a spring that I got in a spring kit. I found that around eight coils was the sweet spot on a 5 16 inch spring. I'm using a modified Harbor Freight tire inflator. Um, it's modified so that it doesn't actually compress air. It pushes and then sucks the air back. Uh, Rick Alexander also has a great video uh, describing how to do this process and on how to make the whole system to make this graver run correctly. So again, check his link in the description. Thanks for watching, and uh, if you stuck around this long, consider subscribing so you can check out our next build.